everybody knows that more is better. More RAM means more programs can run at the same time. More GPU power means more FPS in your games. And more mother-in-laws means more time spent with family. There are downsides. Well, mine is great. But in a world where malware is seemingly more dangerous than ever, it would only be logical to assume that more antivirus software is going to keep her more safer, right? I mean, why not? It used to be that running even one antivirus package would significantly impact your PC's performance. But these days, computers are so much faster that Windows includes its own AV software that most people probably don't even notice is running. So could we run two, three, or 10 antivirus tools to create the safest PC on the internet? That's what we're here to find out with some help from our sponsor, ThreatLocker. ThreatLocker is a totally different way to keep your entire business network safe. But we'll talk more about that later. For now, spoiler alert, more is not always better. Let's see how that goes. Let's kick this off with a good old fashioned boot time test. In front of me are two virtually identical systems with Core i5 processors, 16 gigs of DDR5 memory, an RTX 3050 GPU, and a terabyte of fast NVMe storage. Both have a fresh install of Windows 11 and all the latest drivers, but there's one key difference. This one relies solely on Microsoft's antivirus. Not that one, Microsoft Defender. As for the other, well, we just plum had a hard time choosing between all the options, especially with all of the inbreeding between AV companies these days. Did you know that Avast, Avira, AVG, and Norton are all the same company? Gen Digital, look it up. And they don't just share ownership. Norton and AVG actually use Avast's AV engine these days, and Avira's engine gets used even by third parties like VMware and F-Secure. Uh, this one's booted, by the way. Couldn't help noting that. This one, not so much. <laughs> this is still going. <laughs> anyway, the TLDR is, we got confused, so we crammed our second system full of as much antivirus software as she would take and still connect to the internet. What's the final count? I think 14. 14! My goodness. And it's booted. <laughs> Hold on, I have another fun one for you though. Let's see how long they take to shut down. <laughs> wow, that one's done already. <laughs> Let's read some more lines. Ah yes, react to boot time. Oh, I can tell you all the antiviruses we have. Total AV, Panda, Malware Bytes, Quick Heal, Avast, AVG, Adaware, ESET, Avira, Fortect, Heimdall, Komodo, Clam AV, and of course, good old fashioned Windows Defender. It is worth noting that a couple of them do have reduced runtime protection when others are detected. And I guess I'll talk about our sponsor real quick here because we're still waiting. Uh, it's worth noting, by the way, our sponsor, ThreatLocker, doesn't really compete with any of the antivirus software that we're showing off today. ThreatLocker stops more than just malware. They even block unapproved applications on your network with application allow listing. That means that aside from being protected, your team can't be lured away from that important report for a quick round of Bellatro during business hours. Okay, finally, let's boot them back up and see how these systems feel. Let's start with our control computer. Yep, that's File Explorer. Yep, that's the system tray. If I wanted to launch Steam, it seems like that'll happen in a perfectly reasonable amount of time. Now let's move over here where, oh my goodness, I already have a pop-up to dismiss. Okay, File Explorer. Oh. <laughs> this is a modern Core i5. That was pretty quick for that one, actually. I mean, the system tray was still responsive. How long does it take to launch Steam, though? Ah? Uh -huh. Oh. Oh. Oh my God, this poor system. Look at them all. Malwarebyte 6%, Komodo 4%, Avira 4%. Is Steam still launching? It'll take a while. Wow. Okay, I knew it was gonna be bad, I didn't think it was gonna be like using my Windows 98 machine. I thought it would be, ugh, this is awful. But it's, 
oh, this is awful. And the funny part is when we're not doing anything, the usage of all of these doesn't seem that bad. It's just that that's the whole thing, right? When they're idling in the background, they're fine. But it's as soon as you start to do anything that they're actively, continuously monitoring what's going on and making sure that it's okay. And the system resource usage goes whoop. Oh my God. Did you see how long that took to maximize? Oh boy. That's crazy. Can, can I see yours? Yours should be fine. Yeah. Mine looks like a computer. This shouldn't slow the GPU, isn't the G Do you see that? That's terrible. What the sh That is not the screen capture, guys. No, that's live happening in person. That's wild. It's not, it's not even using that much. No. It's at like 10%. Okay, what's yours? What's yours? One to two percent. And this is way worse than you think because you might say, oh, pff, what, Linus, it's using 10 times as much resources. That's to be expected. But I think it's more than that because yours is using 1% of like one and a half gigahertz. Mine is using anywhere from five to 10%, but my CPU is clocked way higher. Yeah. And I don't know if that's, you know, linear or anything, but it's clear that my resource usage is more rare than it appears. I almost doubled the RAM too. Oh, dude. How's my store? My storage, storage seems okay. okay. Yeah. But I bet my storage becomes a complete disaster as soon as I try to launch a program. So let's both launch Edge and look at the average response time. Three, two, one, click. Oh, okay. That didn't work. Okay, let's launch File Explorer. Let's launch File Explorer. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, click. So you went up to seven mil. Yeah, okay. No, that was fine. Copilot, let's launch Copilot. Three, two, one, click. Yeah, my storage is not hit that hard. I mean, it takes forever to do anything, but it seems to be more down to the CPU that's struggling. Is this ever gonna launch? Did I click it? Yeah, oh dude, yeah, look, I got the spinning wheel. Oh yeah, there you go. Wow. You wanna see worse, plug in the USB key. Really? Where did they go? Oh, that makes sense. They're going to lose their minds. Okay, and so the race is how long it takes for the folder to open? Well, just, just see what happens when you plug it in. Top USB 3 port here? Sure. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. Mine Wait, yours the files is open. up. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay. What? Oh. Look at my CPU usage! They all want to scan it for threats. You better let it do it. Oh, 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 oh good gravy. Just say yes to a few of them. Oh, see what no, happens. no. Oh, wait, some of them don't even ask me. Yep. They just start. Oh, no. So my poor USB drive is at 95% utilization right now. Even my NVMe SSD is registering. <laughs> you were at 30% CPU there a second ago at 3 gigahertz. Okay, you want me to click yes? Click yes to a couple of them. Bleh. That'll give you some time to talk. Back before Al Gore invented the internet, the primary way to exchange data was sneaker net, and the fight against malware depended on knowing what that malware looked like on your disk or in your system memory. Early PC antivirus suites then relied on databases of signatures for known malware. So if your AV tool didn't know about a virus, it probably wouldn't protect you from it. And it was a lot more work to get new signatures than just clicking update and downloading them from the internet. Of course, the damage a virus could do back then was also quite a lot more limited. We weren't exactly banking online back in 1987. It wasn't until the 90s then that antivirus turned into a serious industry. With the arrival of the internet, PCs were interacting with each other like never before. And the problem is that most desktop software really wasn't ready for the dangers of this new level of connectivity. Looking at you, Outlook Express. Antivirus creators then embraced having an easy way to get updates of these signatures or definitions to their users. But then at the same time, virus writers found new vectors of attack. Email, Microsoft Office macros, Java, VBScript, and they exploited them with new types of malware often more quickly than researchers could hope to respond to. Is this still running? <laughs> All right, more history then. We started the 90s with maybe a few hundred known viruses in the wild, and by 1999, the AV test database had nearly 100 
1,000 entries. AV makers like FPROT tried to get out ahead of this rapid fire virus development with the first use of heuristic detection as we might recognize it today. That is, analyzing a program's behavior to recognize potential threats even if that malware has never been seen before. But signatures were still a big piece of the detection puzzle. And I mean big. By 2005, AV Test's database had more than tripled to almost 340,000 entries. And the worst part is that was nothing. In 2007 alone, another 5 million unique malware samples were added to the database. It went parabolic. And it's only gotten worse. So yeah, it was easy to rag on Norton and friends, and they did make it real easy. But between massive databases of potential threats and the need to protect from more and more vectors of attack, it's no wonder that antivirus packages kept using more and more system resources, causing system slowdowns. And that was with just one of them running. Let's try gaming on our system with 14 AVs. We haven't even finished scanning this USB drive yet. Yeah. Sure, let's game. We did so many takes yeah, while this was sitting here scanning. I have 270 FPS. You're sure these systems are I the have same? 294. Oh. Wait. Gaming right. might be totally okay. Because it's not burdening our GPU. And our storage was actually doing fine. Yeah, my RAM usage is way higher. Four gigs higher. And my CPU usage is substantially higher. But this is interesting. I'm at a higher speed, though. Yours is turboing higher, probably because it's less burdened. But the FPS is nearly identical. We just seem to be GPU bound. Yeah. That's interesting. I think it might be because we're running RTX 3050s. These are pretty low-end yeah. GPUs. Look at the process count. And the threads, you have double the threads. That is wild. So I think the only reason this isn't impeding my gaming performance is that our GPU is just not powerful enough. I mean, we're getting 230 frames a second. Yeah, but we're just, we're not revealing, we're, we're GPU bottlenecked. Yeah. Clearly I have plenty of CPU left over to run all this crap in the background. I think we might need a couple higher end GPUs. I'll be right back. He brought us 5080s. We can't plug these into our PSUs. He didn't bring the 12 pin. Really? They don't include it anymore? Well, I guess this is an opportunity to talk about our sponsor, ThreatLocker. They take a different approach to keeping your company's networks safe. Following zero trust principles, ThreatLocker proactively blocks everything by default, only allowing what you decide is absolutely necessary for your team to be productive. This approach means ThreatLocker doesn't require a lot of system resources. And it does more than just limit which applications can be run. Elevation control allows standard users to run specific applications with local admin privileges without ever having that unnecessary privilege as a user. And ThreatLocker Detect continuously monitors the behavior of trusted and untrusted applications and will automatically respond based on the rules created by your IT specialists. These policies are enforced in milliseconds whether or not your endpoint is connected to the internet. Do you see this? What the f***? Mine? No, no, this has got to be a driver issue. It's got to be a driver issue. Maybe my drivers didn't auto-install. Or my drivers probably took so long they to auto-update to the new card that they, that they haven't updated yet. Startup scan and pro- oh my Oh, goodness. your internet was off when you booted up too because the cable fell out. Okay, yeah, that's probably the issue. Okay, 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 okay. It was a driver issue, getting new ones installed. Freaking warm. Uh, great hoodie, terminally online. LTTstore.com, but I'm too warm to wear it right now. Here we go, holy <laughs> dude. We're still in the loading screen, and I'm pretty sure my CPU usage is higher than last time. It's not good, I'll tell you that much. Because I'm at 1,000 FPS in this loading screen now. Yep. I think this is gonna impact it more. My clock speed is lower, -er <laughs> lower than it was compared to yours. I think it's still going to be pretty respectable. I think to so. To be clear. Wow. Let it settle, let it settle in a little bit, because you never know. Here, let's walk up the stairs. All right. So there is no doubt that if you have enough overhead, you can absolutely impact the ability to run games at maximum performance. You're about 20 frames lower than me. But realistically, we're looking at an RTX 5080, Ooh. right? Yeah. And I'm only running about 20 FPS lower than you. It's really not bad. In a pretty CPU-bound game. 
With all of that said, it's very clear that these AV programs are heavy enough to run that they can impact system performance. Which isn't to say that they're unnecessarily bloated, they're just doing a lot. Let's go back to our history lesson. First introduced by McAfee in 2008, cloud-based antivirus uses kind of the best of both worlds. Heuristic detection to identify the behavior of suspicious files, and constant checking against a continually updated online database of threats, taking advantage of the spread of always-on internet connections. It was a really good idea, but Microsoft was about to upset the game board. After years of ruthless attacks from Apple targeting Windows' security, Microsoft acquired giant anti-spyware in late 2004 and quietly started work on what would become Microsoft Defender Antivirus. Starting with Windows 8, Defender was enabled on Windows PCs by default, switching itself off if a third-party AV tool was installed. And over the years, Defender has evolved to the point where those third-party AV tools are less likely to feel needed. As of 2024, more than half of American users use built-in antivirus protection, like Microsoft Defender or Apple's XProtect. And of those that use a third-party solution, only about half use a paid product. As a result, recent years have seen significant consolidation in the antivirus market. Intel bought McAfee back in 2010, only for it to end up in the hands of Advent International, a private equity firm that is rumored to be eyeing Trend Micro as well. And we mentioned Gen Digital earlier, formerly Norton, who now owns four major AV brands. Other major brands have shifted their sites to corporate clients with next-gen endpoint protection and management solutions, leaving the home market to lesser known antivirus solutions, some of which we installed here today. Before we go then, let's see how they handle this little selection of malware that we've prepared for them. Oh, we're gonna intentionally infect them? We're gonna remove the ethernet. Oh, you did, oh no, you didn't. No. Are we gonna, I mean, they should be safe, right? They should be fine. Oh, this makes me deeply uncomfortable, Jordan. They're mostly just test files. Okay. Mostly. Okay, what do you want me to, oh, threat blocked. Hey, the system works. Maybe. Oh, potential threat block. Oh, infected file, move to quarantine full. I mean... Maybe you are safer. Maybe I am safer. Nothing's happened here yet. I feel safer. Okay, what am I supposed to try to do? Uh, whatever you want here. I, I, open up the danger zone. Open the danger zone? Okay. Jokes? Yep. Yeah. Run something in there. It'll be fine. Oh my god. Avoid.exe. Threat blocked. Good. Oh, it's gone. Good. It's gone. Boom. Just like that. How about Vista? Cannot access. It's just oh. freaking out in the bottom corner here. It's Malware stopped. Window Everything's chilled blind windows. Out. I'm... It's working. Killed windows, cannot access. Oh, uh, dude, I think I think it's just removing. Oh, there we go. I finally got a pop up. Threats found. Yep. yep. Okay, so it's, it's stopping me from doing it too. Also working. Well, mine's a lot more calm about it. Yeah. They're working. Yeah. They're working. <laughs> and that was even after I told them, hey, look, don't bother scanning this thing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. The point today was not to answer, you know, which of these antivirus suites is the best. That was not what we set out to do. What we set out to answer was, is more better? The answer is no. Pick one good tool for real-time monitoring, and then if you must run additional tools, just run them as single-time scans. And don't discount Microsoft Defender. I mean, it did work against all these threats. It found the problems here. Even if it might not find every threat. And if you want enterprise or business protection, you're gonna to wanna to check out something entirely different, like from ThreatLocker, who sponsored this little experiment. We're gonna have a link to them in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, maybe you like the vibe of how many USB devices can you plug into one computer? That was a lot of, well, it was pain, but also fun. <laughs>